Welcome to EZLM Learning Simplified. My name is Ruth and the topic for today is electrochemistry. So you are still looking at the electrochemical cell and we are still going to the second part of this cell. So we are going to see a different cells and in regards to the electrode potential. So electrode potential of other cells relative to the copper copper ion half cell so we are comparing so the copper copper ion is a reference electrode so you notice this table is just in reference to copper we're going to have another table later on that is reference to the standard electrode which is going to give different values you notice for magnesium zinc and lead the values are positive and then for silver is negative which is going to be contrary when we get to the electrode relative to the standard electrode potential which are going to give opposite values for the metals is going to be negative for the nonmetals is going to be positive <clears throat> so when you have positive uh, electrode potential values for the metal metal ion positive then the metal undergoes oxidation while the reference electrode undergoes reduction so you can see if you were to compare magnesium and zinc the magnesium is one that is going to lose electrons sorry and then the copper is going to gain them the negative values for example for silver implies the other way around if you were to compare the cell of copper and silver it means that copper is going to lose electrons Electrons and silver is going to gain those electrons. So the zero value always is shown for the reference electrode. In this case, our reference electrode is copper. Although I've said we do have the standard electrode reference cell, which is going to be hydrogen, which we are going to learn later on. So for example, you can be taught to draw diagrams. They can be for unknown ions, especially when you look at the electrochemical series, or you can be given for the specific ones. So in this question, you're going to draw the cell diagram. We give the cell notation, we write the half equations and the full redox equation to represent the cell. So we are going to see how the step-by-step -step you are required to answer this question. It can come on its own or combined with other questions. So the first thing you notice is that we start with the magnesium copper cell. This You have to remember that magnesium is higher in the reactivity series than copper. So magnesium will have the highest tendency to lose electrons. Copper will have tendency to gain. So it means magnesium will be on the negative electrode and then copper will be on the positive electrode. So that's the first thing you have to determine. So to draw, we are going to use a beaker the first beaker is going to contain the magnesium electrode and then the second beaker is going to contain the copper electrode so we are going to dip copper magnesium electrode in a solution containing magnesium ions and then we also dip copper electrode in a solution containing copper ions. You notice my electrode is dipped in the solution. Ensure that it is dipped in the solution. And also the other one is dipped in the solution. And we said these two electrodes are connected using a wire, and this wire is connected to a voltmeter. So we will start, this one is the magnesium, I'm going to write in here, this one is the copper. So the magnesium is a negative or anode, and then the copper is the positive electrode or cathode. And then the magnesium is dipped in solution containing magnesium ions, can be magnesium nitrate. Copper is dipped in a solution containing copper ions, it can be copper nitrate or sulfate. Then these two electrolytes are connected with a salt bridge. And remember, you have to label your work, especially to get the full marks. So this is going to be the salt bridge. And then this is the voltmeter. 
So we have drawn the setup. The next thing is to determine how the electrons are flowing. Since magnesium is under its losing electrons, the electrons are going to flow from magnesium to copper. So when we draw, we are going to show with arrows. And you can see how I'm putting my arrows. That's how you show them in your uh, diagrams, especially when you are answering to the questions. So electrons are flowing from the magnesium electrode to the copper electrode. So the next thing we have written the cell, we have drawn the cell diagram. I want to stress the half equation and then the notation. So the half equation you start with magnesium. So magnesium, which is in solid state, the electrode reacts by losing two electrons. So this is the first half, half equation. And then copper ions in solution gain those two electrons to form copper solid. So you notice copper is going to be deposited around the copper electrode. And then for magnesium, it's going to chip off like it's depleting. So this is the second half equation. If you were to write the cell notation, then it would be magnesium, what we start with, face boundary, magnesium ions, and it's in aqueous state. This is solid. It is important to put the states as well. And then we have the salt bridge separating them. And then the copper ions, aqueous, and then face boundary, then copper solid. And if we had the number of volts, we would put them on the side. So you know the number of volts when we compare it to the electrode potential given. In this case, you'll come to calculate the E cell later on, EMF, uh, in a different lesson. So we are not going to put the specific votes. I will show you how to calculate them later on. So we have drawn the diagram, we have written the half cells, and we have shown the uh, cell notation. So that's how you answer this question. So the only part that is remaining is to calculate the He cell, which you'll do later on. So finally, we do for iron and copper. So once again, you determine which is on the elect anode and cathode. Since iron is more reactive than copper, iron is going to lose electrons, so it is going to be on the anode. Copper is going to be on the cathode. So one more time, you draw the... Uh, the two beakers, and then we will have an iron electrode dipped in a solution containing iron, and then we will have the copper electrode dipped in a solution containing copper ions. So let's show that. So we have iron ions, and then we have copper ions. This is our copper electrode. This is our iron electrode. They are connected with a wire. This wire is connected to a voltmeter. So this is the positive electrode or the cathode, and this is the anode or the negative electrode and the solutions have been separated or connected with a salt bridge so this place should not be enclosed it should be open like this and you label salt bridge And so since ion is losing electro electrons the electrons are going to flow from ion electrode to the copper electrode. So the copper is going to have a deposit around it while the ion becomes depleted. So the next thing is to write the high half equation. So ion forms the ion ions and loses two electrons. And then these two electrons are gained by the copper ions to form copper solid. So if you were to write the cell notation, it would be ion solid, and then cell boundary, then ion ions, salt bridge, then copper ions, uh, and then face boundary, copper solid. 
And that brings us to the end. I know we've not written the E cell. I told you that you're going to learn that later on, uh, especially when we get to calculation of EMF. So any other element can be chosen as a reference electrode in place of copper. So just like I said, and the difference electrode potential values should be obtained for the same element. So electrode potential of a single element is usually determined by measuring the difference between the electrode potential of element and a chosen standard electrode. So the standard electrode that has been chosen, the differences are going to form the E cell and the E cell is a standard electrode potential. So we are going to look at this standard electrode potential in our next lesson. And then now we will be able to connect other cells with this standard electrode potential. So see you in the next lesson.